Uh, the chords in this song is just plainly in the shapes, if you're the capo, G, in this order, G, D, E minor, and C. A lot of popular songs, and uh, I hate to admit it, but you know Taylor Swift has a lot of songs with just those four chords in that order. Uh, most people, you know, the one I always think of is the 50s song, uh, I don't know what it's called, the Crocodile Rock, I think. It's not in that order, but it's got those same four chords. But very simple song. It's just, and a lot of good songs are simple. You don't have to have fancy chords, which most of the time when I write, I have a lot of fancy chords. If you look up Captain John, you got some in there. If you look up Revival in the Air, there's some, you know, fancy chord minors and stuff like that there, but it doesn't have to be. It could be as simple as four chords. Um, the other thing about this song is, at the very end, uh, the very last verse, verse says, uh, The little boy is old now, but he has not forgot her words. She left him a legacy that the world thinks is absurd. Now, when that part happens, certain songs, if you'll listen, not, all, not a lot of them, uh, but certain songs, they will get quieter at certain points. And uh, at this point, I wanted that first half of that verse to be quiet, a little quieter. So it's just me and the bass. That's the idea. No other v instruments are playing, just me and the ba bass. So, And then I'm playing lightly as well to kind of get in a feeling of, okay, everything's slowing down, pay attention. This is a different part of the song, and this is where I want you to pay attention. That little boy is old now. Now notice how it gets louder here to me. He's not forgot her word. She left him a legacy that the world thinks is absurd. But he knows in his heart that what she said is true. Perhaps his soul departs. And so I wanted that to come in louder and the whole band comes in there because, you know, it's, it, it, it's very soft and quiet, but I wanted that hope of uh, seeing his mother again and knowing that that legacy is true. I wanted that to shine. So I kept it quiet before that happened, so that when it does happen, it's louder and it's punchier. And my dynamics of my voice, I'm doing different things than the rest of the song. That's another thing about songwriting, is what you're doing with your voice. A regular verse, see if I did this verse regularly, it was, um, if my voice didn't do any variation, and it sounded like the rest of the verses, it was something like this. That little boy's old now. He has not forgot her words. She left him a legacy that the world thinks is absurd. He knows in his heart that what she said is true. For as his soul departs, he sees. Now, if I'd varied that, which is what I do, to also add to the effect of, here's where you need to pay attention. The hope is alive, and he is, uh, the mother told him the truth, because he gets to see her face and view, he gets to see her again. So here's what I did in my vocals to variate that. But he knows in his heart that what she said is true. He knows in his heart, and I'm singing louder, that what she said is true to give that longing that feeling that you know something's changing something's different and when you're writing a song you know these things come in time it doesn't have to be you have to think all this what's my theme what's my song about and all this stuff when I'm writing uh, the words just come to me and yes I think of a story sometimes I only have the story one verse at a time um, Whereas like this one, I just had, you know, just playing around with this, and then the words came, just like Captain John, the words came from that. Um, 
but as it goes along, you want to vary the different things that you can use in music, like volume, playing softer, and you crescendo, play a little louder, you know, when it gets time for it. Uh, and at the very end of the song, I go back to this. So it kind of bookends the song. It starts with that little lick, and it ends with that little lick. And when I'm doing this, it's just me and the bass. So it's the bass going... just doing one thing um, and not only that the way, the way we do it we've got our bass player to actually use a bowed bass to bow that and it sounds amazing when he does it but also on the second time I do that right here I've got the banjo hitting like a, just one chord at a time so it's like banjo's hitting the one chord as I'm moving. So we have some static things, in other words, things that aren't moving, they're stationary, like the bass and uh, the banjo. Uh, the bass is static and it is moving at the same time. In other words, you're playing one note. Um, So you're just playing one note, not doing all these runs, but the, the bow is moving, doing a lot of the dynamics, soft and loud. Okay, so for Legacy, here's how that sounds at the end. Um, for as his soul departs, he sees her face in you again, 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 again. This is filler, so I'm humming. We're about to wrap it up. song ends and so I add you know full blast it starts on the song and you know you got this soft and then you got the little bit louder and throughout there's variations there's some of the things that stay the same you have the stopping at the end of the little re repetition stand the same and you go back to the, the solo or something and at the very end everything gets quieter you know here's something important is there's and it also, listen to this, whenever, whenever you get quieter, it forces you to listen. Because you've heard the song up to this point, it's pretty good, you know, and all of a sudden if everything dies down, you're like, oh, what's that? Your ears perk up. You can use little, little things like getting softer or getting louder to get people's attention. And it forces them to listen a little bit more intently, and therefore they hear the message of the entire song. Whenever it's quieter is when the word legacy is introduced. She left him a legacy. And then the people going, oh, that's why the song is called Legacy, you know. So little, little things like that, little hints will help you, hopefully inspire you to write songs and to write them a different way. Remember, just start writing a song. You can work on, you know, the details of it later, but get it on paper. Get it out of your head so that you can work with it. I know with me working on songs and working on the chord progression, I've got to do something with it because it just drives me nuts to see, keep playing around with it. I've got two right now that's floating around. I don't know what to do with, so I need to work on them. But anyway, before I continue to ramble anymore, um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, that's the end of this lesson. And I'll do uh, one on Willow's song here in just a minute too, kind of give you a breakdown of it so you can follow along. And uh, so enjoy this lesson and tell your friends. Please subscribe. Check out my other websites. Uh, Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar dot com. If you're really important, if you're really uh, uh, interested in playing lead guitar, not only playing just lead guitar, mostly for you know it's for the electric guitar, not only playing lead, but playing it like the masters themselves, like the great Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, you know Albert uh, Collins and uh, Hubert Sumlin and, and some of the great Johnny Winter, some of those guys. 
I designed the course just for people that are interested in that. It's for serious guitar players. Um, if you're serious about wanting to play and want to navigate the fretboard better and know where you're at, check it out. Secrets of TexasBluesGuitar.com. And you can also check out uh, my uh, Twitter pages, uh, twitter.com slash Beatty, facebook.com slash Beatty slash Texas Blues Guitar, one of, the, one of the two. And my other website for lessons um, is ericbeatty.musicteachershelper.com. So I know that's probably a mouthful, but check those out. And um, I, I add content to those as much as I can. My main focus right now is that Texas Blues Guitar, Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar .com, and my YouTube page. Uh, so for all you subscribers out there, I'm hoping to get a newsletter up running pretty soon, totally free, so that you can get some more information on that. I've uh, been meaning to it for a while, but now I'm finally getting to where I can. So is that it? Um, oh, I do have a blog as well on the Texas Blues Guitar website. Just go there and... Uh, there's some references to click on some of the sample videos and once you get there you can see uh, where the latest news is. In fact the actual link is t uh, secrets of Texas Blues Guitar com slash news so you can look at my blog there and I keep that I try to do that uh, weekly or bi-weekly so rambling again keep in touch uh, stay in touch and enjoy yourselves and uh, y'all be safe and I'll see you in the next video appreciate it